Hello, I'm Marcello Rolando, the Reasonable Voice, thanking you for joining us and becoming one of the reasonable voices heard around the world. Severe disruption to American life. Coronavirus. Climate change. Donald Trump. Quoting, Despite the hysteria from the political class and the media, smoking doesn't kill. Unquote. Mike Pence, 2 March 2001. Quoting, I don't believe effective anti-drug policy involves handing out drug paraphernalia. Unquote. Mike Pence, 27 March, 2015. Speaking of providing a proven effective program in the war on HIV-AIDS. The political dishonesty and religious hypocrisy of Mike Pence reflects his boss's lack of ethics, not only profaning good Samaritan Christian tenets like love thy neighbor as thyself, but denying what Americans learned in the 1980s from conservative evangelical Christian U.S. Surgeon General C. Everett Koop regarding smoking and HIV. However, there's no time for liars and hypocrites, nor panic and the pursuit of obvious villains. For unlike coronavirus, the disruption of America as an exceptional land of the free and home of the brave started decades before James Comey, Facebook, Russian hackers, compromised voting machines, and misinformed American voters elected Trump Pence. This is the time that tries the souls even of the soulless. This is a time to actually be courageous, not settling for the drool of braggadocious bullies, boasting of false success, failures in judgment, and slander more true of he who slings trade wars of outrageous fortune than those who are tweet targets, like a media that may have finally recaptured enough of its lost journalistic breadcrumbs to retrace Murrell's path of honorable, just the facts, fourth estate, discipline, and scholarship. It is not a time to put our faith in a stock market that reflects our disunion, deceit, and denial, but rather it is for us to drive the market of humanity where faith, hope, and love are served and shared more freely than truth. It is not a time for masks, but rather for unmasking the idolaters at the altars of social media trolls, media theatrical hyperbole, and political sludge. It's time to rise above thinking it manly to beat and cheat on wives, oppress voters of color, and sexually harass daughters and mothers. It's time to celebrate innovation, whatever gender identification, electoral preference, sexual persuasion, or party affiliation, and not time for inciting instability with irrational new hoax fabrications. Best we try to relive our collective patriotism during President Kennedy's Cuban Missile Crisis response, resuscitate the amiable person-to-person courage that filled the streets of New York City and parking lot of Washington's Pentagon on 9-11, and resurrect the United We Stand response to trusted medical professionals, scientific facts, and a government of, by, and for the people, not only leading us out of the great 2007-2008 recession, but having the foresight to instill institutional preparedness and an organizational structure that largely spared Americans the Ebola virus. Time we shake off the dust of irregular government practices, MIA agency leadership substituted with acting stand-ins with little expertise for their appointed positions, stressed out nationally and anxious individually from corporatism's dispensing opiate addiction, government dehumanizing immigration policies, and degrading political rallies of hate, encouraging the downgrading of America from respected governances and civilized world organizations. Merciless timing ensures America first toxicity temporarily unavoidable. No time to ignore ignorance nor intelligence, or fail to hold ourselves accountable for the consequences of placing America at the mercy of those dismantling our democratic republic. For neither the warmth of April showers nor prayers from self-congratulatory government executives will miraculously save America from the coronavirus. While in the midst of collective potential calamity, it is understandably difficult to see beyond our own individual needs, like the New Hampshire voter who assured MSNBC that having a job and making money is what it's all about, is missing our big-picture reality. 
Maybe time has passed by our new world, for there's nothing new about denying climate change, or lying to pollsters, or thinking the tree of knowledge of good and evil, scientific discovery, and human kindness are somehow mutually exclusive. In the immediacy of emerging crisis, our FDA is allowing laboratories, which it has not approved, to test for coronavirus. While desperate times call for desperate measures, beware, allow not desperate presidential face-saving to replace end-of-war declarations with domestic martial law edicts. Time we recognize presidential purging to make room for yes-men for what it is, constructing an elite personal government more loyal to his whims than our Constitution. Doesn't such commander-in-chief action risk castrating his legal alliances to congressional confirmations and rule of law also invite divided loyalties from our uniformed protection, both military and civilian? Listen, timely attacks on Fort Sumner weren't inciting moment for civil war disavowing the dignity of fellow human beings was. What if defending each other from coronavirus is do-over opportunity to never again say it's not fair? Maybe it's time to consider Trump's response to coronavirus, our rehearsal for climate change, meant to measure the mettle of our character and human decency. Thank you, and join us. Become one of the reasonable voices heard round the world.